Revival needs to be revived. It needs oxygen. We're going to have a four-day revival. Someone ever told you they were going to have a four-day revival? That's like filling a bathtub full of salt water and saying, this is the Pacific Ocean. When we have a weekend meeting where we get everybody up, and you've seen them, and the preachers compete to outshout each other, they're screaming and yelling, screaming and yelling, till you, you scream faster and better than I can scream and yell. And I watch them, and they're like hyperventilating. <laughs> and I'm not going to criticize that, because obviously God can use that, and unction is a very real thing. But what I think is dangerous is the fact that it never turns into an actual expression of soul winning and deliverance. One of the things that people remark about us is why, look at me, and I'm not bragging, this is to God be the glory, why do unsaved people go to your meetings? You're, you get loud, I know, I get loud. People sing pretty boisterous at your meetings, they do. But it isn't for the reasons that you suspect. The body of Christ is kind of attacked by two extremes. The extreme of diluting everything to where the lost don't even know they're in a Christian meeting. And then the idea that this isn't really for the, the lost, this is for the believer. And they believe this. Here's what they, they tell you. If we shout enough, praise enough, get excited enough, there'll be a suction of lost souls into our church. Well, lost souls never get into a church accidentally. Certainly not by suction. <laughs> but what does work is what we're going to talk about just for a minute. What works is when there is a deliberate plan on the part of the leadership to take this to somebody. We're going to go out. We're going to get people. Now, there was something that General Patton said about war. He said, success in war is speed, simplicity, and boldness. Speed, simplicity, and boldness. I'd go on for a long time. I'm going to be careful not to. What that means to a believer is this. Is there an obedience after a revelation? How long does it take before what God told you to do that you actually do it? And that delay, there's a definition of the term, uh, God spoke, we didn't do it yet. And what is that gap time called? It's called religion. Religion. Religion is the profession of acting as if you're doing what God told you to do without having to do it. Now, we've got to get rid of that. We've got to become deliberate. Now, I want you to look at me. How many of you want people to be saved in your church? All right. Let's start with simplicity. Everybody say simplicity. simplicity. Let's say I were teaching a class on soul winning right now. Let's say I am. How do we change pastor came to me and he was weeping. He said, nobody is getting saved in my church. I don't know what's wrong. Well, that second part was dishonest. But he said, I really am desperate. I want to know why no one's getting saved in my church. I said, uh, do you have anyone in your church trained, deliberately trained to pray with someone if they walk forward? He said, no. I said, do you ever give an appeal for people that are lost to be saved? No. He said, have you ever announced a subject in advance to your people, advising them that that subject would be important to friends of theirs that aren't Christians? No. I said, here's why no one's getting saved. <laughs> Help me, somebody. I said, your baptistry is as dry as Phoenix. <laughs> I could have said Reno. I should have probably said that. I'm sorry. 
you, you don't have any intention whatsoever to take anything from God and utilize it. All right, now, the next thing. Let's talk about miracles. How many of you want to see wheelchairs emptied, blind eyes open, deaf ears unstopped? Is it okay if I talk just for a minute about this? You know, I don't know when I'll ever see you all again. No. <laughs> Amen. Let's talk about that for a moment. Say you're a single woman, and in these days you have to be careful when you bring this up. And you want to get married. You want to marry a man. <laughs> That's what you call a tactic. So, another speaking device. So you want to marry a man. What kind of man you want. Well, you don't want an ugly man. I mean, I'm not trying to say anything against ugly men. You don't want to roll over at night and be terrified. <laughs> you ate lunch. The only reason I'm playing with you now is because it's afternoon. You don't want a man where you could push his face in dough and make monster cookies, okay? No, that's terrible. Don't laugh. That was carnal right there. Don't be laughing at that. So, this is, your, this is your dilemma. That's why we need revival, because it's only in revival that you meet those kind of men. You're not going to meet him on Facebook. You don't want to know what you're going to meet on Facebook. And, and especially since they don't look like the photograph at all, okay? It's like a political promise. It's just not going to happen. And so... We look over here, and the senators are laughing the loudest because they know exactly what I'm talking about. So we take this moment. I told this pastor this one time. I said, you know the most dangerous thing about Jesus for you is that when you asked for a revival, he said yes. Every time you said, Lord, send a revival, Jesus said, I will. I was in John Kilpatrick's home. I was honored to be in his home in Alabama. And we were talking about the Pensacola Revival. So how did it start? Remember, I said speed, simplicity, and boldness. So he said to me, I was in my office and Jesus visited me. And he said, I would like to borrow the church for a while. And then the second thing he said is Jesus said, I will pay my own way. Every single time that you ever prayed for revival, Jesus said yes. So why didn't it come? Because the thing he said for you to do, after that, you didn't want to do it. For many, many months, Bill and Benny Johnson had meetings on Thursday night in, in Bethel. And I never met anyone that wanted revival more. I asked God, the only reason I want you to give Bill revival is because otherwise he's going to die. <laughs> and I, he literally had a condition, an emotional condition, that without revival, I despaired for his life. So I, I said, God, you've got to give it to him. He's not going to be with us much longer. And one Thursday night, a woman broke out in the spirit in their Thursday night meetings, which were generally eventful, but not what, of course, came later. And Benny and Bill looked at each other and said, it's here. Over one woman. One person. See, don't be aware of asking God for revival because he'll say yes. And the difference between me and you and, and, say, Bill, is that God could have asked him anything after that. 